Shortly after that, you're announced in All Stars 2. Yeah. Um, and I noticed a stylistic change from your Dragon Season 4 to All Stars 2. So Thank you, what? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you got money. No, just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> what, what led to kind of like an aesthetic change between those years? You know, because I played the villain on season four, like I said, it was fun and everything, but then people expected to see that every time that, like, we did a show together, or, or it got so boring, and I was just like, I, there's only so many times I can do the same song, there's only so many times I can do, I don't know, it got, it got so boring and redundant, and I hated it, so I was like, you know what, I'm going to do what I did prior to being on Drag Race, I'm going to be this cartoon character and have fun with it, and if people like it, yes, if they don't, I don't fucking care, I'm going to have fun with it. And I think that was the most important part for me maintaining this drag persona on stage is because if I continued to play that villain card for people, I, I would have quit drag a long time ago. Exactly. And then also, like, you changed a big aesthetic. And this was a big thing, too, which I noticed, is that people did not like when it was press week and you showed up to, like, the build series and stuff out of drag. Yeah, yeah. What led you to do that, and why do you think people took such a strong opinion about you not being in drag? I think, I, well, to be completely honest with you, when people watch the show, they feel they own us. They feel that they can tell us what to wear, what to do, what to say, all this bullshit. And that was my way of saying, no, without Jeremy, there would never, ever be a Fifi. And I own everything I create in this world, and you're not going to take that away from me. Um, so I wanted to, I, I love being Jeremy. I, I love it. I fucking hate this shit right now. <laughs> no, but I just see me and I wanted to go myself. See the, the members of like the cats, which I don't know if anybody went to that premiere, but they didn't show up to the premiere as cat. You know what I mean? Like what? So it should be okay to just be yourself. That's a good point. I mean, I think that that's, a lot of times what people end up forgetting and people also forget that you guys are human and you guys yeah. are somebody out of drag. Yeah. And I think that that's a big problem with the fan base, especially now. Like I like as this keeps growing and the audience keeps expanding, it's just like I feel like you girls get so much more hate than yeah. years ago. Because they because fans, and, and I'm so happy that fans enjoy watching the show and, and you know and they support everybody. But it gets to the point to where they a lot of them feel like they own everything including our creative direction with our characters and and you don't you know what i mean so and i think it's really important that we put our foot down and we stand up for you know what we believe in and i believe in myself yeah and i think that you've done a really good job of showing who you are after the whole thing i think that yeah. that's been good and i think that you're showing who jeremy is like at the end of the day like you had two stints on television and now you're jeremy like, you know, you yeah. have your moment, and then now you can kind of go with it. Yeah, I agree. And I'm glad, I'm really, it actually feels really good. I, I do, like, my meet and greets or when I'm on stage or anything, and people say Jeremy. I think that's so cool, because I don't want to be known and remembered for my character. I want to be known as Jeremy the artist, and Fifi happened to be one of those characters. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's actually a good yeah. way of looking at it. I didn't look at that way before. Like, Fifi's a character of Jeremy, and you can have... Yeah, it's a product. Yeah, like, I want people to be like, you know what, he did 365 Days of Drag, his Harry Potter stuff, he did Fifi O'Hara, you know, stuff like that. That's what I want it to be known as, so. And I think it's, go it's absolutely going in the, right, in the right direction. Yeah, for sure. Now, back to All Stars. There was a fan question that I really, I'm going to read this to you because I could not find any information about this, and I don't know if it's Thanks. just a rumor or... Okay. <clears throat> What was it like being in All Stars 2 with Roxy since you both dated and you had a few? Did you date Roxy Andrews? We never, we never, we never date, like we were never boyfriends. We, <laughs> uh, we, uh, we talked, yes, we definitely did talk, but that was it. There was no, no sexual relations, <laughs> nothing like that happened. So, but when we were there, like, <sighs> They really did try to make that a storyline, and like they would see like us going back and forth, and everybody there knew what was going like our past. So they would sit there and be like, "Oh, is there something going on between you two? And we're like, "Nah, bitch, I'm just like trying to do my makeup. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're just talking." So, but you know, there nothing ever happened, and we were not um, we were never boyfriends. The spark never ignited. Never, no, no. You know what it is? Because she, I'm, I'm such a big mouth and she's such a big mouth. Like she has to be in control. I have to be in control. I don't think that would work. Like it just, I don't, maybe it would. Maybe that'd be some great sex. I don't know, <laughs> but it never worked. 
Now, speaking of Roxy, were you at all disappointed that she ended up getting a redemption arc in uh, All Stars 2 and you did not? No, Roxy's my friend. I did, I, 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 I was, I didn't, I was happy to see her succeed. It was so stupid to hear like the audience going off about her and, and, and all this bullshit. But to be there with her, I, it was just fun. I had so much fun with Roxy. And especially like the day I got eliminated, I knew I was going home. And um, she was so worried that she was going home. And I remember being backstage with her and like, we have such good memories um, of just me being like, girl, I'm going home looking like this. Like you still look beautiful. And like, and she's like, no girl, I'm not. And I was like, no, you're going to be fine. And I, just, I really do love Roxy and I'm happy that people love her, love her in return. That's good. Yeah. Do you, looking back on your experience of All Stars 2, did you think the whole time, did you know at all that you were going to have a villain story arc? Or did you, was there a moment that it clicked with you that like, hey, something is changing? Oh, oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, so the moment I got there, everybody was just like hugs and kisses. And you know, that's how TV goes. It's, it's, it's what it is. But then getting there and doing, so you have to film and then on the weekends you do your confessionals. And it wasn't until getting into my confessionals and Jacqueline was my story producer at the time. She did not like, a, she did not like a single response that I said. And she kept saying, no, you gotta be truthful. You gotta be truthful. And I was like, what do you mean you gotta be, I'm telling you what I feel. And the moment she kept trying to push me to say what she wanted is when I realized like, oh, you don't, you don't want me to be nice. You don't want me to be who I actually am for you. I get it. And that's when I, we started butting heads on, on there. And um, I, I refused to give her those sound bites that she wanted. I just wouldn't do it. Do you think that that retaliation and kind of like not saying what they wanted led to you getting eliminated? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And you know what? I'm glad I left. I, it was not fun. I, I refuse to put my, I do this thing and I tell this thing and like, I tell this to all my fans and any of my supporters, like you deserve to be in a circle surrounded by people that build you up and make you feel good. And the moment that is like hindered or there's somebody negative in there, you need to remove that. And for me, that was the producers in the show. It, I just felt like shit. I felt like I was trying to, you know, I felt like Donkey Kong, you know, I was just trying to run up the ladders and then the producers are Donkey Kong throwing barrels at me every time. And it just was like exhausting. So I, I'm, I'm happy I left. I am so fucking happy that I did not win. <laughs> <laughs> did you, do you, do you feel the same way that Adora felt when she left early? I think I need to go. I'm leaving RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars 2. I feel like shit. I completely get why Adora left. And you know what, and I kind of felt bad because I was the one that held Adora's hand when she left and I was like you are not leaving like you're gonna stick this through I told her to um like just sleep it off that night if you feel bad tomorrow when we film the next episode then do what you gotta do but at least just think about it and everything and in that moment I get it I fucking get it <laughs> because it just makes you feel like shit we, we spent all these years touring and building up our brand and our fan base and this positive circle for us to just go back on tv and get it rip down to tell us that we're nothing again you know what i mean and it's just it, that's horrible it's, it's not a good feeling and i think that no. at the at the end of the day too like you can kind of see that you can kind of see your your energy you can see a door's energy on there that like there there was yeah. a turning point yeah it's just i think that's sad and i think i people got mad at a door and you know what fuck that, those aren't real fans those are not real fans of a door they got mad at um it's it's if you're a real fan of somebody, you would have applauded that person for taking them out of that, that situation that made them feel uncomfortable. Exactly. Yeah. At the end of the day, I mean, that's all it comes down to. And then yeah. you, I know that you, you didn't go to the reunion. <laughs> First one, yay! First one. <laughs> um, was, was there a reason why you decided not to go? Yeah. Um, yeah, because I, they can't use words against me if I'm not there. You know what I mean? And um, I was not going there from a place of love. I was ready to cuss Rue out. I was ready to cuss the producers out. I was ready to just go off on Alyssa. Like there was so much hate in my heart. Like I, it wouldn't have gone well. And for me, it was the best thing to do to just not show up. Just, just don't give them what they want. Because I can say whatever the fuck I want to say to RuPaul, but it, it, to, to the fans, it will never show as good. It will never, whether RuPaul was right or wrong, it will it never show as anything positive for me. And the, and the producers would never allow that to happen. So I just decided 
I'm better than this. I don't need to put myself through it. Props to you. Because I think yeah. that you, you took control of the situation. Like, you're not going to yeah. be controlled. Like, at the end of the day, like, you could have gone in there and been the nicest, sweetest person in the world. But if the edit was totally different, then yeah. it's not, it's not going to matter. Yeah. And, and I do want to say, like, and I've said this a bazillion times. People are like, oh, she sounds ungrateful. I am beyond grateful for everything that the show has done as far as giving me a, a stage and a voice and a platform now. Um, but for me, how I look at it is the show might have mentioned my name, but I made my name. You know what I mean? The show didn't, didn't leave a great light on me. I had to do that myself. So as I, I'm so grateful that the show was able to mention my name to the world. And now I'm so grateful I can leave them aside and let RuPaul's Drag Race be RuPaul's Drag Race. And now Jeremy can shine and show the world who he really is.